Welcome, folks. I'm going to give a difficult video on quotient groups. So these are um, you know, important objects in abstract algebra. They take some getting used to. This first video will be the rigorous definitions, but then in the next video, we'll do um, examples of two different quotient groups that I hope to hope will clarify them and, and, um, and explain why they're useful. So you've heard a little bit about the direct product or the direct sum of groups. So the Klein four group Z2, direct sum Z2 is an example of, of taking two groups and combining them to get a larger group. Okay? So you can take two smaller groups and combine them to get a larger group. Quotient groups are a way of making a group smaller. You take a group and sort of divide out or mod out by something to make it smaller in a way that can elucidate the structure of that group. All right. So I think I've mentioned before the definition of a normal subgroup. This is due to Galois. And a subgroup H of a group G is normal in G denoted H is normal in G with that triangle symbol if the left coset AH is equal to the right coset HA for all elements A in G. You never call a group normal you always call a subgroup H inside a larger group G normal in G. And if H is a subgroup of two different groups, it could be normal in one of them, but not in the other. Okay. So normal is not just describing H, it's describing H's relationship inside of G. This is the left coset. AH is defined as the set of all things of the form AH, where H is in our subgroup capital H. And the right coset is all things of the form HA, where H is in the subgroup capital H. If G is abelian, then any subgroup is normal just because AH is equal to HA for any element little h. Um, but you can also have normal subgroups inside groups G that are not abelian. Okay, I'm going to plow ahead with some theory and notation, and we'll do some examples later. All right. So if G is a group and H is a normal subgroup, then we define the quotient group G mod eight, G mod H, or G quotiented out by eight, <laughs> G quotiented out by eight, um, to have as its elements the cosets of H All right, so its elements are cosets, and I need to define the binary operation. So let's take two cosets, um, AH and BH. Their product had better give me another coset and we're gonna have it give this coset. Okay, so when I combined the left coset by A with the left coset by B, I'm gonna define that as the left coset by AB. 
And the remark is this will work so long as H is normal in G. In which case we have the following. So I can sort of use associativity to write this as follows. And then since H is normal, this right coset HB is the same as the left coset BH, okay? So this I could also write as BH. And then I could use associativity to get this. This just means, you know, the set of all things are that are of the form one element in H times another element in H. But H is a subgroup. So whenever I multiply two things in H, I get another thing in H. And furthermore, I could get anything in H just by taking one of these to be the identity. So it, it turns out this is just um, A, B, H. This last step is, you know, since H is a subgroup, And this step here is since H is normal. All right. So I expect folks to be a little unhappy right now, which is fine. <laughs> I'm gonna stop this video here I'm gonna give two examples of quotient groups so you could actually see what a quotient group is. Okay, but that's, and that's the most important part right now. Let's just see an example quotient group or two. And then we'll come back probably on Friday and see, we'll, we'll understand this um, comment here a little bit more by seeing how this fails when we look at a particular subgroup that's not normal. And when you take a subgroup that's not normal, when you multiply two cosets, we'll see how you could get something that's not a coset. So therefore you don't have a binary operation, right? If, if the elements of this quotient group are supposed to be cosets, but in the case of a non-normal subgroup H, if we can multiply two cosets and get something that's not a coset, then of course we don't have a binary operation. And that explains a little bit why you could only define this quotient group in the case that H is a normal subgroup. All right, public questions?